Visionaries is proud to present its 22nd season on public television. Sometimes you read the paper and watch the news, and it seems like there's more bad news than good in the world. But you know what? It's just not true. I at least can hold on to something, that there's something, that, you know, maybe it's small, but there's something that I'm doing to make a difference. It's just a feeling that you have. You can help people. You have to. There's no alternative. Every child has potential that we just can't know. And so to my mind, that's what we're doing. We are saving potential for the future. In 1919, two Los Angeles society ladies, philanthropists Ann Banning and Ada Lachlan, brought 11 of their friends together to provide food and clothing to families impacted by World War I. This group of women became the Assistance League. Today, the Assistance League of Los Angeles, and they gave their time and treasure to help those in need. This story is about how simple concepts of doing good can grow and evolve into a professional organization that changes lives in real and measurable ways every day. We're here to serve the children and families here in Los Angeles that, you know, really are from parts of town that are low income, that are struggling, you know, to break certain cycles of poverty that they have found themselves in. And as an organization, through all of our programs, we serve a total of between 20 to 22,000 kids a year. So uh, today we are on our way to the Assistance League of Los Angeles Playhouse to watch a performance of Mr. Scrooge that is being done by the Nine O'Clock Players, which are an auxiliary of the Assistance League of Los Angeles. The Nine O'Clock Players actually have been creating theater programs for almost 80 years. And we've invited five different schools from across Los Angeles so the children can have the opportunity of seeing classical children's theater live for the first time in their lives. fun is they come in here not knowing what to expect. Most of them have never been to a play, never been to a live performance. They almost think they're going to see a movie. What do you think you're going to see? And then when the characters come out and the whole play encompasses them, they get taken away and it's just a real fantasy experience for them that they've never had. And, and they come out having a brand new experience. It's just, I think that's the most rewarding thing. This program that the Nine O'Clock Players produces every year and invites thousands, actually over 12,000 children every year are able to enjoy the greatness of live musical theater. Because we get to bring the kids every year and every year they would scream and laugh and they would have such a good time. And then we'd go back and talk about the stories. It will be the grandest night that there and we really show the importance of inclusivity. We teach a lesson through all of the shows. There's something for the kids to take away. The importance of generosity of spirit, of not bullying, of inclusivity, what, whatever the specific lesson is. 
that's what we're trying to show the children through the musical theater. At the end of the play, the characters come out and meet the kids on the street, and we get to pose for pictures. Are you hugging everyone? I'm hugging everyone. Some of them want to. They want to try out for. They're going to audition. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but for many of our students, this is their first live performance. Justin, let them know you want to be an actress. Well, I hope you guys all become actors and you have fun on stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we always need members. That's Start true. earlier than we do. <laughs> Bye. All of the auxiliaries love the Assistance League of Los Angeles so much because the programs give them an opportunity to work hands-on with the children. So in the, in the case of Ann Banning Auxiliary, they are the sole providers of Operation School Bill. And so they volunteer in a million ways to be able to make that program truly successful. Operation School Bell is the common thread that ties all of the Assistance League chapters across the country together. It is our hallmark program and it brings joy to so many children's lives. You don't ever see what the real people of Los Angeles are like and where they live and the struggles they have and what they have to deal with in order just to, you know, go to school and get an education. The tractor trailer behind me is packed to the gills with all of the supplies that we provide the children. All of the schools we service are Title I schools, so they're the most needy of the children in Los Angeles. The children that come through the program today, each one of them will get to select their own backpack, and they get their socks, and they get to select shoes, they get school uniforms, they get a book, they get hygiene products, they also get all their school supplies. You're not gonna break the cycle of poverty if a kid can't be in school every day and learn. And what we're trying to do here is make sure that they have the tools to be in school every day and learn. Because they don't look different than other kids. They have sneakers, they can participate in recess. They can feel good about themselves. They have clean clothes to wear to school. And we work very closely with the counselors to make sure that these kids have a great opportunity. You have everything you need, you know, to look good and to feel good and to get to school. The children come to us usually in the cars of their counselors the principals, the individual school administrators will transport the children to our location. Um, we'll also have an, a large number of children that come to this school regularly. There might be 20 schools that bring children to this location today to get closed, but they've all been pre-selected by the counselors and so forth from their school. This is where we're going to hand out jackets and backpacks. Every single item that is purchased here is purchased new thanks to a donation from somebody who cared to make a difference. Because, you know, we have all member volunteers are providing the service and program. And all of our volunteers track their hours because it's very important when we apply to grants for foundations to be able to tell them that we have volunteers who put in X number of hours a year and that we don't have a large number of paid employees so this is really a labor of love for the volunteers and that we use the bulk of the money we raise to buy the clothing for the children. This stage is uh, where the kids get their new shoes and five pairs of new socks and for most of the children this is the most exciting part of the day. Okay so the children have gotten their backpacks which have a dictionary and hygiene kit and a binder in it and they've also gotten a jacket and they picked a book and so now they're coming in to get their uniforms. What this program does, it's, it's like an incentive for the children. Uh, apart from the fact that it normalizes their situation a little more, it's also being able to be comfortable going to school. It's very important for these kids to have in order for them to be successful in school. We strive to support the education process. Everything we need to do to support that classroom operation, our people are committed, they really are. Who have an adult that is actually there to assisting whatever the need might be, whether it be an emotional need, in this case, the need of clothing support. It's very important. 
When we bring the kids here sometimes, they're a little bit shy, they don't know who they are, but uh, the Assistance League have been around for a long time. And these ladies do an amazing, amazing work connecting with our kids, and the kids know it. Operation School Val in this operation, it's right to the children. There's nothing in between. Our guys helping, there's the volunteers from their place. Often school police are here helping too. It's direct contact. There's no middle. So at the end of the day, you get choked up inside. I am right now. You get choked up inside because there's no bureaucracy. It's just happening. And that's pretty powerful. I personally believe that if every child would have a caring adult, whether it be a teacher, a parent, an uncle, anyone, it's just or someone from their community, it really helps not only their self-esteem, but also helps them to progress in life. We're going to address 6,000 children this year, and our, our goal is to increase the number of kids we dress by 10% every year. So for us, it's extremely critical that we bring in new members. Without members, we can't deliver our programs and services. Because obviously, Getting this all ready takes a lot of organization, not just being here to help the kids that day, but a lot of planning beforehand. So in order for the children to continue to be served, we need to always have new people joining the league. Debbie has been here since 95, I've been here since 98, so we tend to keep our volunteers for a long time. And right now we're making a big outreach to millennials through our young professionals group. We're also providing an opportunity for teenagers to get involved through our assist teens and our young men's assist teens group. Hopefully we'll be able to serve many, many more in the future. We have a goal to grow it 10% every year to serve more and more children because the need is so enormous. You know, 6,000 kids, it's amazing, it's fantastic. Nobody else is doing what we're doing. But at the same time, you know, there are hundreds of thousands that are living in poverty in Los Angeles. It's really scary to think what's going to happen if these children can't get some support so that they can get an education so they'll be able to help themselves as they're older. Around 273,000 children are living at or below the poverty line. So that's around one in every four kids in the district. When we think about our organization, we always say we want to leave a legacy. Well, a legacy is not a bunch of buildings and things like that that you leave to someone. The legacy is what we leave inside people. So it's the impact that we have in their lives. There is something magical about the league. There really is. Walking into the building, you get a sense that this is a happy place, and you get a sense that you're really making a difference. When you're doing great work for a great mission, you really do make great friends and relationships, and you have a stronger connection with your community. It is absolutely about the kids we serve, and people that are here, that's what we care about. We're here because of that, and seeing the kids run down the hall with you know, an oversized backpack and an oversized smile. It, it's what we live for. They often say that they get more in return than what they're giving. The great thing I think that hasn't changed in a hundred years is that people want to do this. There's just an intrinsic desire to help. And so I think anybody who has that desire, who feels that, can find a place here. Come on in. Here at the center, everyone is a volunteer. Uh, we've been in operation for 26 years, and uh, right now we have volunteer staff of about 50 people. That includes students that work with us on the weekends. So in the, what will happen is that one of the volunteers will take each one of the children. So uh, We get referrals one. from the Department of Children Welfare Services, and they call into the office and they set up an appointment. And what we do is have ample volunteers to help the children. So as each child comes in, we are ready, and each one of us is a personal shopper. And we try to make it as happy as we can for them. Come here and work a day, and you don't have to say anything else. You get the hugs, you, you, and yeah. you get the smiles, and the happiness that goes out this door. We rely on the community, so we reach out to schools, we reach out to other civic groups to come help us and do drives. Uh, we reach out to local businesses to help us as well. Hey, look how handsome. It's just a wonderful place to spend time and to be with the children. And um, I've been doing it for maybe 15 years, but the lady that brought me in is 97, I think that's how old Nancy is. And she doesn't drive anymore, but we're picking her up for our Christmas party on Sunday and taking her there. And we just keep an eye on each other and stick together. And um, it's wonderful that we can do this for the children. I think it's amazing that back in the early 1900s that this 
group of society women absolutely were so invested in trying to help others that they started an organization in Los Angeles that is now nationwide. We are passing on a legacy and uh, some of us bring our grandchildren to work. Mm -hmm. They're teenagers now and I brought my two granddaughters. They've come back twice and uh, they love it. They just think it's great. A lot of college students have been helping us throughout the years and they too see what it means to pay it forward. I started out as an assisting when I was in high school down in Long Beach, but I didn't get back involved with the Assistance League until recently. When I moved to LA, I reached out and she mentioned that there was kind of a lack of millennials in the Assistance League in the LA area. So we got together and formed the Young Professionals Group as a way for millennials um, ages 22 to 35 to get involved with the league and kind of bridge the gap in the membership. I came to the first meeting and I like the mission and what they're doing, so I decided to come back and help and be a part. Coming together of people that want to make it a better world, especially for children, that's the driving force behind all of our guilds, is children. and. We must also remember they're our future, and hopefully our golden future. What most draws people in, especially our age, is getting that like hands-on feel with the children and getting to interact and like see what a difference you're making directly in their lives. And I feel like that not only makes us feel good when we're volunteering, but that has the most impact on all the kids that we're working with as well. I think women today like to be involved in something where they can really see results and, and know that at the moment when they're involved, they're really you know, making a difference. So they're not just in for the social of it. Now it's really just to serve you know, the children. This is the Assist Teens group. The Assistance League thought it would be nice to have a group that included teenage young women so that they get the feeling of what it's like to volunteer, to work for a service organization, and the introduction of it is through their mothers. Um, I think it's generational. I think it'll continue because you're really directly affecting and helping uh, young kids' lives, and who doesn't want to help children? It's definitely very rewarding, especially when they just, they're so grateful, more grateful than anyone I've ever seen in my life. It's just very rewarding. My mom has always been pretty involved in charity. Like her whole life, she's just been doing stuff like that. And so she finally was trying to get me involved because I've been doing stuff for, you know, school. But it was, you know, it was about being something bigger than that. So then we started out with like a few buddies of mine in the assisting league for the guys auxiliary. Membership is really important. So we work very hard on trying to convince them to continue, you know, the legacy that we've had for established for almost 100 years. And we were very fortunate. Our vice president and Ways and Means was a go-getter lady and still is at 90. My name is Barbara Hardesty and the Assistance League is my life, really. I joined in 1974 and I've been very active for all these years. To think that you do belong to an organization that's 100 years old, that's pretty amazing. College Alumni Auxiliary, or CAA, was started by some women who graduated from UCLA together in 1938. That's when it was founded. We just generally support the league. We usually have fundraising activities. We each have a mission, and we each, um, we like each other's missions. And yes, yes, we do. And we can support also them. support them too, which is really very nice. I have many, many friends that I have, you know, made lasting friendships and you're doing a good service to the community, which is very important in this day and age especially. And it's wonderful to do good work instead of all the, the negative things that you read about that go on. 
The mannequins was was started in 1943 uh, by one of the members of the Assistance League, and it's a group of women who love fashion, who love design. A lot of the women who are part of this auxiliary are, in fact, in the fashion business. Uh, we have some clothing designers, we have models. So there was kind of that common interest. So we do fundraising for the League. We uh, put on a fashion show uh, biannually. We have an afternoon with Eve Lund uh, that we put on as a fundraiser to assist Assistance League of Los Angeles. So that's our role. I actually joined the mannequins not knowing much about Assistance League just a few years ago, and I just fell in love with the work that Assistance League does as a whole. And so that's why I became much more involved as, with Assistance League in addition to my own auxiliary. <laughs> This is the preschool learning center of the Assistance League of Los Angeles and we serve 50 children a year that are living in, you know, impoverished circumstances one way or another. The, the children come from families that are lower income. Some of them are actually considered homeless and in shelters. So there's no way the parents could really care for their children or provide them a safe environment, let alone one of learning and social development, and still earn an income. There's no way they could do that without this preschool learning center. This community really needs preschools, nurseries. They, you know, we need childcare. Without childcare, you know, there's no hope. Yolanda Quintero is our program director, and she's been with the Assistance League of Los Angeles preschool program for over 30 years. So, you know, she's someone who's so devoted uh, to the children, devoted to the program, always seeking to you know, bring the latest in educational developments. Hi, baby. What pasta are you making? The philosophy is, well, first, serving children from all kinds of nationalities coming for working parents. We provide breakfast, lunch, and snack for children for free and uh, we provide emerging curriculum as well. We have parents, families who are living in shelters and they bring the children in here who they feel so happy. Having a home, a real home, this is what it is. Many of the teachers have also been with us 18, 20 years. So it just shows their genuine concern to help these kids. This age kids, it's a three years old. Of course, they are so amazing. Like she's a from Arabic. She doesn't speak English. Tell me, hi. Hi, Miss Lana. Hi, Miss Lana. And ask people, how are you? How are you? It's easy to communicate with kids who don't speak English. Just give a love. Yes, yeah. Love and love, and they understand everything. Okay. Your soft winter clothes keep out the cold. You know, as an organization, it's so thrilling to see just people from every part of the community come together to support programs like the preschool. For this program, we have uh, the preschool auxiliary who are helping fundraising money for the school, uh, providing events for free, so they work really hard with the school. They come in here as a volunteer to the children, helping with anything they need, blankets, clothing, gifts for the holidays. That's what a great job the students are doing. <laughs> I've been involved since 1975. We are a, a group of women, the preschool auxiliary, who have helped in, golly, in so many ways. We've tried very hard to make the school, which it is right now, a wonderful, wonderful school. And I think that the, the rewards are um, such that it's not necessarily a money value, but it's a person value. We really feel that it's our honor to be able to contribute to the families of Los Angeles in a way that's really meaningful and enables us to create a lasting impact in the lives of children. Wonderful moment that I had at one of our graduations was a young man came up and he had been like just one of these children. He said that he had received so much strength and guidance from our school in many, many ways, not just in book learning or l learning the alphabet or whatever, but nutrition and clothing and how to treat your neighbor, how to be friends with each other. He really was a remarkable young man. I was so proud, really, that he was one of our graduates. That is so precious. You know, if you feel that you can help one child, 
just one life. You know, who knows what that child will become in the future? We don't know. Maybe they're the next Nobel Prize winner. Maybe they contributed to transform the conditions of poverty that they grew up in. But we have to give them a chance. We have to give them an opportunity to really express their full potential as a big part of the community as a whole. Never underestimate the power of a small group of dedicated women. Today, there are 120 Assistance League chapters across the United States. A century of community service has positively impacted more than a million lives. For the visionaries, I am Sam Waterston. with the generosity of Honda, Cambia Health Foundation, Eustace Kwan Family Foundation, First Nonprofit Foundation, Massimo, CGIAR, Newman's Own Foundation, Group M, Inner Workings, Gustafson Family Trust, Dr. and Mrs. Dennis Gustafson, with additional support by Grand Island Chamber of Commerce, the Bill and Mary Hall Fund, Hall County Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Nebraska Tourism Commission, Citizens Commercial Banking, the Herman Family Foundation, Andy Goodman, Deborah Pate and John Forrest, Diane Deshaun, Friends of Becoming Independent, the State of Norman Chalmers, African Development Bank, the Ernest L. and Ruth W. Finley Foundation, Paul and Deborah Cleveland, Piari and Richard Moser, M.D., Nigerian Government, Cornerstone Legacy Foundation, and Luis and Hank Leander. And from the following.